Hello and welcome to R Programming and Data Science Specialization series. Get ready to dive deep into R Programming. Whether you are a seasoned pro or just starting out, we have got something for everyone. From the basics to the cutting edge, we will explore R Programming from every angle. So buckle up, grab your favorite beverage and let's jump right in. Together we will unlock the secrets of R and have a blast along the way. In this lecture, I am going to give a little overview and a very brief history of the R statistical programming environment. So the very first question I think is most obvious which is what is R and the answer is actually quite simple. It's basically R is a dialect of S. Okay so that leads to the next logical question which is what is S. So S was a language or is a language that was developed by John Chambers and at the now defunctional Bell Labs and it was initiated in 1976 as an internal statistical analysis environment so that uh, an environment that people at Bell Labs could use to analyze data. And initially it was implemented as a series of Fortran libraries to kind of implement routines that were tedious to have to do over and over again. So there were Fortran libraries to repeat these statistical routines. Early versions of the language did not contain functions for statistical modeling. That did not come until roughly version 3 of the language. So, in 1988, the system was rewritten in the C language and to make it more portable across systems and it began to resemble the system that we have today. So, this was version 3 and there was a seminal book called The Statistical Models in S written by John Chambers and Trevor Hasty, sometimes referred to as the white book and that documents all the statistical analysis functionality that came into the version. That version of the language, version 4 of the S language was released in 1998 and it's a version we more or less use today. The book Programming with Data which is a reference for this course is written by John Chambers sometimes called the Green Book and it documents version 4 of the S language. Overall while the S programming language is no longer as widely used as it once was, its legacy can be seen in the continued use of S+, which is the commercial implementation of S that was developed by Tipco Software Incorporation. It is still in use today, although it has been largely uh, supplanted by R in the statistical community and in R's compatibility mode, which allows users to run S code within R. This feature was added to R in version 3.4.0 released in 2017 and is designed to make it easier for users who are transitioning from S to R. So R is an implementation of the S language that was originally developed in Bell Labs. So just a little bit more history here in 1993 Bell Labs gave a corporation called StatSci which became Insightful Corporation an exclusive license to develop and sell the S language. In 2004 Insightful purchased the S language completely from Lucent. So Bell Labs became Lucent Technology for $2 million and became the current owner. In 2006, Alcatel purchased Lucent Technologies and it's now called Alcatel Lucent. So Insightful developed a product which was an implementation of the S language under the product name S+. And they built a number of fancy features into it, for example graphical user interface and all kinds of nice tools. So that's where the plus comes from in S+. In 2008, the Insightful Corporation was acquired a company called Tipco for $25 million and that's more or less where it stands. Tipco still develops as a plus although in a variety of different types of business analytic type products and it continues to this day. So you can see the history of the language is a little bit tortured because of the various corporate acquisitions but it still survives to this day. The basic fundamentals of the S language have not really changed since 1998 and the language that existed in 1998 looks more or less like like what we use today at least superficially and it's worth nothing that in 1998 the S language won the association for repeating machinery software system award a very prestigious honor so in a document called the stages and the evolution of S John Chambers who was the original writer of the S language the original creator kind of laid out his key principle with designing the S language and it's very important I think to see this which is that basically they wanted to create an interactive environment 
where you didn't have to think of themselves as programming then he says uh, uh, then as the needs became clearer and their sophistication increased they should be able to slide gradually into programming when the language and system aspects would become more important so the basic idea is behind the s language and then later the r language is that people would enter the language in an interactive environment where they could use the language the environment without knowing about any sort of programming or having to know very detailed aspects of the language so they could use the environment to look at data and do basic analysis and then when the environment when they kind of outgrew their environment then they can get into programming they could get into learning the language aspects and learning to develop their own tools and the system would very kind of uh, would promote the kind of transition from user to programmer and so that was the basic philosophy of the s language so that's enough about s we now let's go back to r so what is r about so basically r is a relatively recent development in 1991 it was created in new zealand by two gentlemen named ross yakha and robert gentleman so they talked about their experience in developing r in a paper published in 1996 in the journal of computation and graphical statistics in 1993 the first announcement of r was made to the public in 1995 martin mishler convinced ross and robert to use to license r under the gnu general public license and we will talk a little bit about that in a second and that made r what we call free software in 1996 a mailing list was developed so there's two main mailing lists one called r help which is general mailing list for questions and uh, the other called r dwell which is a more specific mailing list for people who are doing development work in r in 1997 what's called the r core group was formed and those contained a lot of the same people from the s plus who developed s plus and the core group basically controls the source code for r so the primary source code for r can only be modified by the members of the r core group however a number of people who are not in the core group have suggested changes to r and they have been accepted by the core group so some of the features of r the first one is which was important back in the old days when people were still using s plus but the syntax is very similar to s which made it easy for s plus users to switch over this feature is not quite so relevant today where most people generally go to r directly the semantics are superficially similar to s in that it looks like it's s but in reality are quite different but we will talk more about this in the future lecture one of the main benefits of r is that it runs on any standard computing platform or operating system mac windows linux whatever you want even on your playstation 3 and there are frequent releases so there are annual major releases and often there are bug fix releases in between there is a very active development going on and so things are happening the software the core software of r is actually quite lean its functionality is divided into modular packages so you don't have to download and install a massive piece of software whereas you can download a very small piece of fundamental core kind of functions and then add things on as you need them so its graphic capabilities are very sophisticated and give the user a lot of control over how graphics are are created and in my opinion are better than most stat packages it might even be the best for the kind of a general purpose statistical package It's very useful for interactive work as i said before but it contains this powerful programming language for developing new tools so it eases the transition from from the user to the program and fundamentally actually for a language like this is that uh, there is a very active and vibrant user community so the mailing lists at r help and r dwell are very active there is many post per day and there is also a series on stack overflow where questions can be answered so the user community is one of the most interesting aspects of r it's where all the r packages come from and it creates a lot of interesting uh, kind of interesting features of course one of the probably the most critical feature of r is that it's free both in the sense of free beer and sense of speech so what i mean by that is that it does not cost any money so you can download the entire software from the web 
and also it's free software so i'm going to divert for a second to talk a little uh, bit about free software so with free software uh, there are four basic principles right you have four basic freedoms that uh, you have the freedom zero is the freedom to run the program for any purpose there is no restrictions on how you can run the program or when you can run the program or what you can or cannot do with it freedom one is the freedom to study how the program works and adapt it to your needs so this happens almost every day which is that you can look at the source code for r itself you can make changes to it if you want you can or you may improve it or make a better version of it you can sell changes to it if you want you can modify the program any way you want and adopt it to your needs of course uh, you can look at the source code for this to get freedom one freedom two is that you have the freedom to redistribute copies so you can help your neighbor and so the idea is that you can give copies to other people you can sell the copies you can do whatever you want with it lastly you have the freedom to improve the program and release your improvements to the public so the whole community benefits so this is the freedom three the idea is that when people make changes to the program they can release them to the public so that everyone gets uh, those changes and so these basic freedoms are outlined by the free software foundation and you can see more about it at their website there so there are a couple of drawbacks of r i won't go through all of them and probably other people have many more complaints but there is some basic drawbacks which are one that it's essentially based on 40 year old technology so the original s language developed in the 70s was based on a couple of principles and the basic ideas have not changed too much since then and so as uh, one of the results of that for example is that there is little built-in support for dynamic or 3d graphics but things have improved greatly and not on that front since the old days and there's a lot of interesting tools now packages for doing dynamic or 3d graphics Another drawback of R that I hear about uh, a lot is that its functionality is based on consumer demand and basically user contributions. So if uh, no one feels like implementing your favorite message, then uh, that's your job to do. And so you cannot, uh, there is no corporation, there is no company that you can complain to. There is no helpline that you can call to say that to demand a specific implementation or a specific feature. If the feature is not there, then you have to build it or at least you can pay someone to build it. Another drawback which is a little bit more technical is that the objects that you manipulate in R have to be stored in a physical memory of the computer. And so if the object is bigger than the physical memory of the computer, then you cannot load it into memory and then therefore you cannot do something in R with that object. So there have been a lot of advancements to deal with this too both in the R language and also just in the hardware side. There are computers now that you can buy with tremendous amount of memory. And so some of those problems had been resolved just by kind of improvements in technology. But nevertheless, as we enter the kind of big data era, where you have larger and larger data sets, the model of loading objects into physical memory can be of limitation. And finally, I'll just say that R is not ideal for all possible build solutions and so many people I think in ways is a good thing uh, they have high expectations of R they expect it to be able to do everything but it does not do everything and so you should go into knowing that fact so the basic R system is divided into two what you can think as uh, two conceptual parts there is a base R system that you download from a CRAN which is the comprehensive R archive network and that's kind of the go-to place for all things in R. Then there is a kind of everything else. And so the base system contains what's called the base package, which has all the kind of low level fundamental functions that you need to run the R system. And then there are other packages contained in the base system, which includes, for example, utils, stats, data sets, graphics, and a bunch of other packages that are kind of fundamental packages that more or less everyone might use. And then there are a series of recommended packages. So boot for bootstrap, class for classification, cluster, core tools, foreign, and a variety of other packages. These are the commonly used packages. 
they may not be critical packages but they are commonly used by many people so all of these packages come with this the base R system that you download from CRAN now but there is much more than this obviously and on CRAN there are right now about 20,000 packages that have been developed by users and programmers all around the world these packages are user contributed they are not controlled by the R core and they are uploaded to CRAN on an every day on a periodic basis and the CRAN has a few has a number of restrictions and uh, standards that have to be met in order to get a package onto the CRAN so one of the nice things about CRAN is that that the packages that you upload have to meet a certain level of quality and so there have to be for example there has to be documentation for all the functions that are in the package and uh, they have to make sure that they pass a certain number of tests so CRAN has a lot of different packages written by users and the number is really increasing every day so it's very exciting to see all these packages on CRAN and to see new ones come up every day there are also packages associated with the bioconductor project which is a project designed to implement our software for uh, genomic and kind of biological data analysis and of course there are also other packages that are developed and that people make available on their personal websites and there is really no reliable way to keep track of how many packages are available in this fashion so there is uh, really thousands of packages out there written by people that you can discover and use to analyze data so there are a couple of documents that you can find on the R website as you are learning to use R you, you then want to flip through some of these one is an introduction to R which is a relatively long PDF document now that kind of goes through the basics of how to use R how to use the language there is the writing R extensions manual which is really only useful to read if you are thinking of developing R packages which uh, are those R extensions to the main system the R data import and export manual which is useful for getting R's data into R and the various different ways the R installation administration manual is uh, most useful if you want to build R from the source code and I will talk about uh, that in another video and then the R internals manual uh, is a really technical document for how R is designed how R is implemented at a very low level and and it's not really for the faint of heart but if you are that kind of person who wants to know how R works at a very low level this is the document for you so I am just going to end over here with a couple of texts that are kind of standard or kind of classic text in this area of course the books by John Chambers offers data analysis and programming the data are both published by Springer and then there's two books by Bill Venables and Brian Ripley. One is called Modern Applied Statistics with S and others one called S Programming. Although they have the, uh, they talk about S in the title, these books are all, are both uh, very relevant for our programming too. There's a book by Penhero and Bates, which is on mixed effects models in S and S plus. That's also quite useful for our programmers too. And finally, Paul Morrell, who designed the R graphics system, has written a book called R Graphics. And actually, it's currently in its second edition right now. So, a couple of other resources. One is that uh, Springer, the publisher Springer, has a series of books called Use R, which is uh, a lot of uh, very kind of relatively short books. How to use R for different types of topics different application areas this is a quite nice series of books that you may be interested in and then there may be a book written for your particular area of application and uh, there is a longer list of books on the R website so that was a brief overview of R and the history of how it kind of came to be and uh, starting with the next video I will start talking about the details of the R programming language and how we can use it to analyze data